right, so our next session will be with Chris Howarth from City, who will be covering securing container image supply chains. Um, our sponsor is Steampipe. Sorry. Steampipe, which equals security as code. So with Steampipe's open source CLI, you can use SQL to explore your cloud resources. Over to you, Chris. I'd like to talk about um, secure container image supply chains with a uh, particular focus on a couple of tools called uh, GOSS and OpenSCAP. So first off, I just want to provide a little bit of background as to why it is really important to secure container images um, for consumption in any organization. Then I'd like to go on to talk about some of the methods we've employed to ensure that the container images that we can consume are secure. Uh, in particular, I want to focus on um, GOSS and OpenSCAP um, and provide a demo of those two tools. Then I'd like to focus on a very important aspect, which is uh, vulnerability scanning or CVE scanning of images. And then finally, I'd like to talk about pulling these components together along with other components to form uh, an end-to-end -end secure pipeline. And lastly, I just want to talk about some of the key successes and benefits we found from such an approach. So first, just to provide a little bit of background, as we know, the, the adoption of container images continues to grow exponentially. Um, indeed, a, a report from Gartner recently indicated that by uh, the end of next year, more than 75% of global organizations will be running some form of, uh, will be running that some applications or applications in a production environment. Now, most, if not all of those organizations will be consuming external third-party images. So how do we know we can trust these images? So just like to, like to take a look at the, uh, the, the structure of a typical image. And if we look at the diagram on the right, we can see that at the lowest level, we'll typically have a base layer, which is a, a stripped down version of the OS. Then layered on top of that, there's normally some form of middleware. So that might be a Java image or Nginx or something of that nature. And then finally, on top of that is layered the application itself. Now, the lowest level there, the base layer, will almost certainly be provided by um, some external uh, provider. Indeed, the, the next layer up as well, where there's a middleware component as well, it may be that people import an image that's a combination of that base layer and the middleware all in one. But regardless, it's really important that those images that we consume either externally or indeed ones we produce ourselves within our organization are images that we can trust. Now, recently, there have been a, a spate of software supply chain attacks, which have resulted in considerable reputational and financial um, uh, difficulty for, for a number of organizations. In particular, the, the CodeCov case uh, was an example whereby a Docker image creation process, a pipeline was infiltrated and the bash uploader script was modified in such a way that when people ran it, sensitive information was uploaded to a, th a third party website and that included in indeed credential information. Another example of a software supply chain attack is the Sunburst or SolarWinds attack. So how do we minimize the risk of consuming these third party images? So I'd like to talk about a couple of open source tools called GOSS and OpenSCAP, which can help with this. Now, the sort of um, checks that these, uh, that these tools can provide are policy um, or test checks uh, based on a number of criteria. So for example, the sorts of things they can check are, they can perform file and, and package integrity checks. They can check for world writable files and directories, steward checks. They can check for the presence of packages which uh, are either wanted or unwanted. So for example, in a container image, you would typically not want things like SSHD, FTPD, or any type of interactive sessions into a container. So you would check those aren't present. But equally, a particular application may want to validate that a particular package is installed or the version of the package and so on. One of these tools, OpenSCAP, can provide a full set of compliance checks per benchmark standard. So people have written benchmark tests or written to those benchmark tests, such as the CIS benchmark tests or the Department of Defense STIG profile, and then coded those so that then they can be consumed um, directly by, the, by, by OpenSCAP itself. And finally, there's the ability with these tools to create your own customized checks. And we'll see some of this uh, in the demo. So next, I'd, I'd like to switch straight to a demo of these two products. And in particular, using um, I'm going to, what I've done is I've created a Linux image and pre-installed the software onto this image for the purposes of the demo.
So first off, I'm using a tool called Podman, which you can think of as a more secure version of Docker to gain access to this. So we're running a, a, a pod called, uh, a, a, an image called Demo and gained an interactive shell access. And first of all, just seeing that the GOS software is installed. Now, the first kind of test we're going to do is a file validation check. Um, file we're going to validate is an important one, the Etsy password file. And what we're going to do is create a fingerprint of that file and store it. So the command to do it is gos add and then file and then the name of the file we wish to add. And what this does is it, it, it creates a YAML file which contains that fingerprint information. So it's got information such as the owner of the file, the group, um, permissions, and so on. Having generated that profile and stored it, if we then run a command called gos validate, we actually can then validate the file Etsy password against the, the, the profile, the fingerprint that we've now created. Now, each of the green dots there represents a pass test. So there are six pass tests and no failures, which is what you'd expect because we're just validating against the file which we just created. However, imagine the scenario where someone's maliciously got into the system, they've changed the, the ownership of that file and set it to the user games instead. If we now run GOS validate, um, instead, you can see now one of the tests has failed. There's a red F there. And you can see that the ownership is now set to uh, to, ga to games instead of root. So we just set this permission back for the purposes of the demo. So that's one type of check that uh, that GOS can do. And we've set it back, and now you can see we're back to a good state. Now, a second type I'd like to mention is a type called command. And for this, um, we're going to imagine where you've got a, a an application, and maybe it's got a config file that's got information information you want to preserve. So maybe this application you require to use a specific cipher, say AES256, and so you've stored that in your application config file. And now we're going to write a test that simply checks to see if our, our application config file is configured correctly. And what this test just does is very simple, just essentially runs a, a check against that file by running a grep. So it cats the file and just greps for AES256. And now what we're going to do is add this test to our GOS YAML file, so our defined set of tests, using, again, the command GOS add, but this time check choosing the command construct and then the name of the test. And what this will do is then run the test and then capture the output of the test. So here it's recorded that the test's exit status is zero and that, that it's found the string AES256. Now, again, say someone had managed to infiltrate your, your code at some stage, and they had modified that file and reduced the, the Cypher um, uh, security and instead changed this to AES128. So in that scenario, um, we've now got a, a violation. So if we rerun the GOS tests again uh, with the GOS validate command, now we can see um, that we've got two failures marked. We've got the six dots for the green passes uh, for the Etsy password, but now we've got the the, uh, the, the exit codes as, as one instead of zero, and EAS256 was no longer found. So just looking at the GOS file itself, you can see the two tests defined. Now, GOS, it does just gives you a flavor. GOS has got a whole bunch of other um, types of tests it can incorporate, but these were certainly two of the most useful, but they're things like package checks uh, and so on. Now, a second tool I'd like to uh, show you is OpenSCAP. And OpenSCAP, as, as I mentioned earlier, this um, uses uh, an XML defined set of tests and people have already put a number of these uh, tests out there. So for example, there are already existing benchmarks available and using this XML hey, Chris, file, you can run the- Can I interrupt yes? you real quick? Could you increase sure. the text size for our audience? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I can't because it's, uh, it's a pre-recorded uh, thing. I'm not sure I can do that easily. Um, Apologies. Uh, Perhaps you I'm can nearly through the demo actually. Zoom in maybe a bit. Um, again, I'm not sure I easily can. Apologies. I'm nearly through okay. the demo itself. Okay, that, that's better. That. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so here I've run an OS cap command to list the set of tests that are defined. And um, there's a CIS profile there that I mentioned earlier. And also the uh, the uh, Department of Defense STIG profile. Um, so now we're running the actual test through, selecting the CIS profile. And 
this is scrolling through each of those tests that are defined, already pre-created. And one of the options I selected on the command line there was to pr produce an HTML report as output. And that's one of the really nice features of uh, OpenSCAP that um, you can produce this easily readable output. So while this runs through, it takes about sort of 30 seconds or so. I'm just going to skip straight to the uh, output report in, in, in the interest of time. Um, and here's the HTML report. And you can see it's got a nice human readable format. It's, this is for the CIS benchmark for um, RHEL. And, and also, um, if we scroll down, we can see that there were there uh, 50 tests undertaken, and they all passed. Um, but what's, what's really neat is that um, if, if you can get into the detail of each of the tests themselves. So here we've got one for the um, a, a GPG key check. And here it shows you what the test was, um, a description of it, how to fix it, and so on. So if you generate this report and provide it to developers, then it's nice and e easy for them to go ahead and fix the, the issue that was encountered. So that's just to give you a flavor of the two tools, GOS and OpenSCAP. Um, I'd just like to go on now and, and say some of the findings that we had from running these tools. Um, so the sorts of things that we picked up. So we certainly saw world writable files and directories, people putting those in, and also it, shell access being defined for accounts within containers. So things like um, set, set to a shell rather than no login. Also, uh, an interesting one, careless uh, path settings. So here I've got a, 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 a test where it failed one of the CIS benchmark tests. And in particular, developers carelessly set the default container path to include their application path uh, and also at the beginning of the, the path within the container. And so this applies to all users in the containers, all, also root in the container potentially as well. So the consequences of that, for example, are that if we have um, a, a, a a command called RPM, and it's located in the optmyapp bin directory, then that version of the RPM command would get picked up in preference to the, uh, the system RPM. I mean, there's a, an innocuous script there of just a hello there, but you can imagine that something more malicious could be, uh, could be planted in that scenario. Now, I in, in that demonstration, I showed uh, GOS and OpenSCAP already installed on a container. However, what we can do is incorporate these tools into a pipeline as part of a build process. So here's an example where we've got a Docker file and the top line of the Docker file, uh, the from field there shows the name of the, the image that we're pulling in. So this could be uh, your vendor Linux image, for example. And then next down, you can add in customizations. So these could include, for example, um, your organization certificate, um, maybe some yum repos you want to uh, put in there as well. Then you may want to harden the image, so remove some, some settings from maybe users who are not required. And then we go on to run the GOS and the OpenSCAP test. So this is exactly what we ran through in the demo. So you install GOS, define a GOS, copy in the GOS.yaml file, run that, and similarly for OpenSCAP. Now, at the very end there, you don't really want your final image to include the tests. So what you can do is by naming the stages earlier on, that bottom line there from hardened will take the image at the point where it hardens, but you didn't have the GOS and OpenSCAP tests installed, and that's your final image. So here we've managed to build our, our, our uh, image and at the same time test it and then storing the output without the image included. So just to summarize, um, GOS and OpenSCAP and compare them. Um, they're, GOS is very simple to install. It's just a single binary. Uh, it's Linux flavor independent. And it's extremely simple to take um, a, a secure container, as we saw, as a template, and then generate policies from that. Um, it's also extremely easy to create your own custom checks, again, as we saw with that command construct earlier on. OpenSCAP, again, it's relatively simple to install, but does have a few dependencies. Um, but a really nice feature is these pre-canned set of report, uh, policies that we saw, the CIS ones and the Department of Defense STIG one, and also this feature of producing human-readable output. It also includes a, a workbench tool, which can help you create your own custom policies because they're a little bit more tricky than GOS. So one, one item we do need to talk about briefly is, is CVE or vulnerability scanning. Um, what I've shown here on the right is a plot of image uh, of a series of 
um, scans of images over a period of time of, of a particular Linux distro. So it goes back to July 20 through to June 21. And the, each bar shows the number of vulnerabilities with the criticals in red, highs in orange and mediums in yellow. And obviously over time, this will, this will drop off as you get nearer the current date, the number of vulnerabilities goes down. But I think the key point to note here is that how fast these vulnerabilities grow. So if you look at June 21, um, we've got about 10, but you only have to go back a couple of months and this jumps to 80. So it's really important to get to the latest and greatest version of the images you can as fast as possible and then go out and repave your, your, uh, your images that are layered on top of that with that latest version. So to finish with, um, just want to see how these are, explain how these can all be pulled together into a single pipeline, which is fully automated end to end. So again, taking our example of a, a Linux image, firstly, that's pulled from an external repo. Um, first thing you'd want to do is do a check some of that image to make sure it really is the image you think it is. Then add on your organization customizations, those ones we specify in the Docker file. So adding in your um, uh, hardening the image and also adding in yum repos for your organization possibly. And then in step four, one thing we didn't, didn't go into, but it's important to validate that Docker file. There are tools out there. So for example, there's an open source project called ConfTest, which can do this. Then step five, this is the meat of what we've done. Uh, validated the image um, using GOS and OpenSCAP. And then as I mentioned, CVE scanning for that image to get pushed out into production. And then finally, that, that then needs to go through to any images that are layered on top of that and then repave your estate with the new images which you've built, replacing the, the older ones. And one key consideration just mentioned here is that when building the images, it's, it's advisable to use something more secure than Docker. Docker is highly insecure, but use a tool such as Podman or Canico or something of that ilk. So lastly, um, what are the key successes and benefits we've seen from this approach? Well, having a, a fully automated uh, build with a uh, uh, image pipeline with no human involvement at all ensures that the images are, are reproducible, they're more secure, and very importantly, they're very fast. Um, we're able to get images uh, right out into production the same day that they've become available from the third party source. And in so doing, we absolutely minimize the number of CVEs that are available uh, that are present in that image. Um, also, just as a note, the pipeline components themselves that we use have automated testing. So for example, every GOS test that was in there, there's a test to test that test actually works and picks up any, any violations of that defined test. And this ensures that the pipeline itself is, is robust and speeds up development. So finally, um, by using tooling such as GOS and OpenSCAP to validate the images and also this automated scanning of the images as well, means that we can have a higher degree of trust that the images that we consume were built with security in mind. Okay, uh, that, that's what I had. Uh, are there any questions at all? It's on. <laughs> if there's any questions, if you'll post them in the Slack channel or if you wanna just raise your hand and I'll, I'll come to you. Oh, got one question. One moment, Chris. Sure. Yeah, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I was wondering if your concern is a compromised base image or an image that's been somehow corrupted, uh, how are you dealing with the fact that the scan is running inside the context of that image where potentially GOSS or OpenSCAP could be uh, maliciously interacted with? So Chris, did you catch that? I, I caught half of it, sorry, it's a bit muffled at the beginning, sorry. Um, I think I think I've got the gist of it. Um, if GOS and OpenSCAP were compromised themselves, yeah, I, I could see that potentially being a, an issue. But um, the, in terms of the vulnerabilities in the software themselves, that would largely be picked up by the um, by the vulnerability scanning software itself. Um, I'm not sure I quite got. Is that sure. what the gist of the question was? Sorry. Uh, my question is more that when you install GOSS in the image, if the image is malicious, 
it could simply ensure that GOSS returns a positive result in all cases because you're running the scan inside the compromised container. If you have um, checks though before that, so for example, in the Docker file itself by conf test, then, then you could validate that the Docker file itself had not been tampered with before you actually ran the, the pipeline to, um, to, to install, to install the, the, the security checks themselves. So yeah, that, that would protect against your Docker file itself being tampered with. Um, yeah. Does that cover the question? Okay. So we did have one that came in. What advantages does Podman confer over Docker when building images? Yeah, so, so Podman and indeed tools like Canico, they run in user space. Um, so where, whereas Docker will essentially run as root. Um, so this means that effectively, if you're limiting your build to run within the user space, then if someone were maliciously able to break outside of the build process, then they would only gain access to the user level and not as root. Um, so that way you're protecting your build environment further. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience? So Chris, I did have one question. Um, with both GOSS and OpenSCAP, is there any way to get like a historical view um, to say this vulnerability showed up this many times or um, this container image is always, you know, looking malicious? Um, yes, certainly the CV scanning software will, will typically already include that, uh, give us a, an idea over time as you saw on the, the chart okay. uh, there. I think the, the GOSS and OpenSCAP, yes, we can track that over time, uh, but basically we, we won't let a, an image through if it fails one of those tests. Um, CV scanning is a bit more of a compromise because you, 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 you'll always have vulnerabilities within images themselves. So there it's a case of, um, you know, historically you can track them and you can beat people up with their images to get them fixed, but you still want to get those images to go right the way through um, in most scenarios because the latest and greatest is always going to be better than the, the, the oldest. But, but for the GOSS and OpenSCAP type stuff, those are policy things we, we will enforce right the way through. And um, so we can track, track historically how people have done with the images, but, but basically they have to get fixed before we allow them through in any case. Well, thank you, Chris. I think that's all the questions we have. Um, just a quick announcement. So it is lunchtime. There will be box lunches. Um, please meet and greet your fellow attendees, and we'll see you back in an hour or so. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.